Next item, please. So next, I, I still have um, the Care to the Core event. Yep. That was a great event on the 28th of April. And we have Dr. Swidan and some students here to um, provide a presentation. Um, we have um, Miriam, uh, Kareem, and, uh, <coughs> and thank them for their, <coughs> a couple of them with their leadership on the council as well, and in the district. It was a great day. So we have one from, well, Nan is from Forreston, Kareem is from Dearborn High, and Miriam is from Etzel. I'm gonna let them take over because they really did everything. Um, this was a little different this year. We had more student input, and I think it was really towards the end of when we started looking at SEL back a year ago um, with Micah Saley and um, Dr. Maleko. We wanted to have more students involved in student voice, and at those meetings, we had student voice. So I'm going to let you guys take it over. We're going to play the video of this. Okay. We're going to have to play the video. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank so you. So we're going to play a video yes. first to kind of highlight the day. Uh, and then we'll let the students kind of break down everything that happened in that during. Thank the you, period. David. Thank you, Dr. Swain. Caring is one of the core values of Dearborn Public Schools. Whenever someone is not feeling okay, you could always help them just by smiling at them. Is when someone needs help, you jump up and go help them. Caring is trying to see things from a different perspective. What is caring? Caring is it's about respect and letting people be themselves for who they are. What is caring? Caring is showing respect to others. in all kinds of ways. Caring is when you smile at someone and light up their day. Being nice to one another and helping them get back up and never let them give up. when somebody is listening to you. Caring means to me when you, is when you're being the upstanding. Good evening. As Dr. Swaydan already mentioned, my name is Miriam Segir and I'm a student at Edsel Ford High School and I attend DCMST. My name is Kareem Kadu. I'm a senior at Dearborn High School. My name is Iman Sadqeen. I'm a senior at Fordson High School. 
So Care of the Core Day um, is in, uh, something that was started in 2018. Um, it's a day of student-driven initiatives um, that are focused on identifying and stopping bullying um, with the overall goal of uh, improving the culture within our schools. Um, so Care of the Core Day um, encourages students to have open-ended conversations, discussing the importance of compassion, creating a safer environment, um, and like I said, that anti-bullying awareness. Uh, Mariam and I had the um, the honor of attending all of the Care to the Core Day um, or some of the Care to the Core Day initiatives with Dr. Maleko and some of the board, the cabinet members. Um, we went to Gear Park where there was a um, assembly on core values, a painting project at Stout Middle School, and then compassion cards and a letter to a friend at Woodworth. Moreover, we also attended Dearborn High School where they had a health fair. We also went to Fortson High School where they had classroom restorative circles, including students from all kinds of classrooms, including AP students, students in normal classrooms, English learners, and students with special needs, along with Edsel Ford High School, high school where they were having core value discussions. And here are just a few pictures. Some of them were used from the video as well, but these were just showcasing some of the schools that we attended during that day. As we spoke at the Superintendent Student Advisory Council meeting today, um, we asked students what the reflection was about Care to the Core Day as some of our SSAC members were involved at the Stout and Woodworth programs during that day. And this, this was some of the feedback that we got. First off, a lot of the students felt a sense of community and unity among students that they spoke to as our high schoolers went and visited middle school and elementary school students. They had many meaningful discussions, along with they had a lot of engagement, engagement with various age groups as the high schoolers went and visited middle schoolers that were also going to attend their high schools as well. They created a connection with, between students and a lot of the middle school students talked about how they could see the high schoolers as role models and how they can look up to them, look up to them and learn from them. It cre and they built better co communication skills. And last but not least, it implemented a social emotional learning into the classroom setting, which is usually you know, not used in the classroom. Here to talk about the importance of having student-to-student -student interactions. This is not to say that teacher-to-student -student inter interactions are not important. We believe that um, having teacher-to-student -student interactions are very important as um, a child grows and as the child is a part of the Durban public school community. This is just to say that um, having interactions between high school students, middle school students, and elementary school students is very important because um, they are a form of empowering. And usually students um, see um, no empowerment as lack of um, motivation, and lack of motivation may lead to sometimes performing poorly at classrooms. So we think that's very important. Secondly, um, us um, students, we share a different perspective that may not necessarily be um, shared with um, um, or, or observed by administrators. So we think, like last time when we went to Woodworth, we talked with um, Woodworth um, students and we talked about the high school experience and what to prepare and what to look forward to. So that was very important and we communicated with each other. Thirdly, we talked about um, authenticity and although they refer to, refer to us by Mrs. and Mr., we still had that link with each other. We were linked, we talked about our experiences. Um, we had similar experiences and we just, we kind of connected with, with each other. So we thought that that was important to um, have student, student interactions. And yeah, that was pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Josephine, Josephine Watts, excuse me. Um, I was sad that I wasn't able to make it this this year. Um, I was sick, so um, I stayed away from every one. Um, but I had noticed that during one of your slides that some of the feedback that you received was the students said that they felt connected to one another. And I think this is maybe a question for Dr. Mleko. Do we have any other initiatives or events where students are able to have sort of that that we can replicate what this event does? Because I'm assuming we do this in May because it's mental health Awareness Month, correct? Uh, or yeah. I guess how did this event come to this be? Is an, this is an annual event yeah, that we yeah. do for sticking up to our core values, so that's why. The right, but I guess why do we pick It had to do versus... with bullying prevention and other topics that okay. are positive, which is how it started, yes. 
Is there any way that I'm just thinking like, how could we replicate this so that it's not towards the end of the year? Because I think it, there's value in being able to connect to your students, to your student body towards mm -hmm. the beginning of the year versus waiting to the end of the year to say, I've connected with my fellow students. Yeah, um, we, just something to think about. So we agree with you 100%. And the students want to do, to do more mentorship. And Dr. Shreda, you want to get to the mic? Oh, thank you. At the SSAC meeting today, that was that took up a big part mm -hmm. of the agenda where students wanted to start some mentoring and tutoring. Um, and it could be cross-age tutoring mm -hmm. and mentoring. So that's something that they want to take on and will support them. Because I think coming from them is the best way to do of it. Course, yeah, and absolutely. we and some of the middle schools that they went to have said, yes, you know, we would love some kind of program where students from the high school can come in and be with our students, maybe during advisory or something, but we were, we're in talks about that. Yeah. So great, do you guys wanna add? Yeah, I can also uh, briefly touch on this. We'll touch on it at the next meeting when we do our full SSAC year in review to the board. Um, there were visits, um, this just kind of touches on what Dr. Swedan was saying, um, from different middle schools to the high schools. Um, and those were the SEDSAC members of those uh, respective middle schools that came over to the high schools. Um, and the SSAC members from each high school uh, broke off into smaller groups, gave a tour, and then we had conversations about leadership, um, high school life, all of that. So that's something we're also working on expanding next year. Wonderful. Trustee Mosin. Well, thank you to to you for presenting. Great job. Um, so, so you said you're not a senior, right? No, I said I'm a junior. I'm a junior at Etzel. Oh, you're you a junior at Etzel. Yeah. I'd like to ask the forts and then. Factors and pioneers, where are you going for college? Um, I am going to the University of Michigan, Dearborn. What are you majoring in? I'm still undecided, but I might go for Middle Eastern Studies. Amazing. Just because I came from overseas two years ago, and I might want to just expand upon that. Great. How about you, Katie? I'll also be attending the University of Michigan, Dearborn, majoring in business. Good school. Perfect. Amazing. Great job. To our Edsel um, Junior. Are you planning on uh, rejoining the Student Advisory Committee next year? Of course, and it will be an honor to do so. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Good to hear it. You students are amazing, and I thank you so much for what you do. And I do really like the idea of um, you mentoring and just kind of a big brother, big sister type program yeah. because you take younger students, they automatically look up to you. And with that connection, they can also, um, you might be able to help them uh, in some of the personal issues that they face that they might not be willing to talk to an adult or administrator or even a teacher about. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that connection. So thank you very, very much for what you've done and have a wonderful summer. Thank you. Good job. Madam President, if I may add one more thing. Yes. Um, I, my son obviously goes to Stout and he participated with Trustee Watts. He participated in a uh, after school activity where they actually did gardening. And uh, as I mentioned in the last meeting, Omar is has Asperger's and he perceives students differently. So he had a bullying event with one of the students and where they went for it and Dr. Sweden actually facilitated that restorative circle for them. But she suggested if they can do the gardening project together. Guess what? Now he calls Majd as a friend. So I, I commend you for that, Trustee Watts. I think we should do that more often. And I hope that we do the care to the core. Obviously, it should be everyday thing, similar to Mother's Day. Mother's Day should be every day. But care to the core, we should focus on establishing those relationships every day, not just one day of the year. And I do agree that we should perhaps have some similar event, Mr. Mistonen in the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. and then in another similar event at the end of the year that would, that would make it. I, I think, think that's a good su suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. And in the beginning of the year, it'll start binding mm -hmm. those students yeah, together. Absolutely. So, Because there is a lot of misunderstandings that go, oh, yeah, and especially when you have students who have, we're, we're so rich and diverse, and students, unfortunately, perceive others different. When you see the other person you're gonna automatically, you know, think about the stereotypes and those things and those conversations. And Dr. Sweden is definitely an expert on these. We just recently had the bullying uh, forum at the Democratic Club, but she mentioned that is that students need to talk more beyond the classroom. 
beyond just they're they're going there for eight hours, nine hours a day. So they need to find ways of dealing with each other, <laughs> whether it's respectfully, whether it's being friends or, you know, but at the same time, yeah, we should definitely minimize bullying and, and, and shame, not shame it, but um, decrease it to a level where it, students are not bullied or we would have an open uh, school uh, that is outgoing, that is a school that is welcoming to all students where students feel safe. Thank you. And that's an ongoing process for sure. Absolutely. Um, one other thing, I just wanted to give a shout out since we're talking about student mentor mentoring, real quick to um, the web programs and what is the other one we have, the webs and... We have the mentoring programs. I know the AOSB program was um, before COVID, but we also have the Link the, Crew, the link the, crew yeah. program, yeah. So we do have a lot of those type programs going on at the beginning of school years that are bringing in middle school students to their high mm -hmm. school, and they connect. So there's a lot of that, but I think it's so valuable. We ought to look into different ways of uh, um, bringing that resource. And I would just say that with that, there is, a, there is a lot of things going on during the year. Now, COVID did put a slowdown on some of it, but the Care to the Core event came from not having just this, you know, these auditorium sessions, but to actually promote it mm -hmm. throughout the district in the buildings and to allow some creativity because like you said, green schools or bullying prevention, mm -hmm. some schools want to take on, I was at the 100 year uh, anniversary and I spoke um, at Duval and I know they, I was principal there previously and I did dress up as a penguin <laughs> during the Halloween dance and I'm still trying to get Mr. Addy and possibly <laughs> principal Tim, if I mentioned that in my story, um, you know, being the Penguin School, but the Green School and all the initiatives there or the gardening was so important. So part of it was to allow some creativity with each individual, but to highlight things. Um, and so I think it is positive, but we can definitely look to expand some of those uh, ideas. And with our SSAC, we will like to have them come. I think I mentioned to you, we usually have them come in, in June. And you see Kareem's leaving. He's been there for three years. Miriam, um, you know, brings that institutional knowledge. So that's why we allow 10th, 11th, and 12th graders and then we have the middle school. We don't allow enrollment for the ninth grade yet because we want them to get situated in the high school. And then if it's something they want to choose, they can apply. So that's part of the, the positive. So thank you. Um, and I just have a couple other positive announcements. Our uh, lawyer, Mike Gibbons, who served us well for many years and um, had been with Tim Courier, who re retired. Well, he was recognized in the lawyer's business law. He sent us to the board uh, weekly um, for great... Um, business law throughout the state of Michigan. So that's a real positive. I also want to mention Yana Garrisi received the Chamber Impact Person Award on a Friday. And the only other thing I do want to mention um, before I turn it over is I did have a very positive meeting with what we started a music committee with teachers that have been here. Um, with um, We have some community. We have members of the um, the orchestra, the Arab American uh, orchestra, and the, uh, the uh, youth. It was a very positive meeting as we look to jointly promote the program, both with a combination of staffing and with working on exciting programs that can lead to more students in those programs. There's another meeting for this year. Um, we had to just kind of had one meeting to get it discussed. Uh, they all wanted to meet again in June, and then we will look for plans into next year. So I think it's the beginning of a very positive program. I will be part of it for the, at least for the beginning start. And at times the individuals will take over without me being there. So that was very positive. Thank you. And that's all I have. Wonderful. Next item, please. Oh, President, um, since this kind of segues in, um, to the conversation we've been having, a couple of the items under the non-agenda items were follow-ups to, um, things that had been brought up at previous uh, board citizen participation commentary items. And I've noticed that over the years, um, as we changed and said that we wouldn't respond at the time of uh, uh, commentaries because we didn't want to misspeak or give out um, in inaccurate information, we, we discussed before that we would like to have a follow-up. And sometimes we miss out on those follow-ups. Sometimes we get the information personally after there's been some comments made um, by citizens that we then discover maybe have holding inaccurate information or, or, or inconsistencies in what we're actually doing that we never bring back uh, before the public at a follow-up meeting. So I would like to include um, for the future um, on our agenda 
a section of uh, somewhere either before or after citizen participation and also a section for board follow-up on citizen participation so that if we have anything to add to a previous board meeting where comments have been made that we wanted to clarify or add new information or, or correct misinformation, we, we are sure not to miss it. Tonight we had a couple of items that we did um, clarify from that, and I would like to make that a regular part of our agenda moving forward. Trustee Barry. Trustee Petrikos, I think that's a great idea. I want to go specifically to one of the non-agenda items, go back to the discussion of school safety. Um, we are very thankful for all the parents that reached out to us and uh, sh showed their concerns. We can always improve when it comes to student safety and employee safety. No doubt in my mind, it's the administration, the board, the whole community. That's the number one issue is safety. So uh, thank the parents that reached out to us, not just on social media, directly phone calls came to meetings. So that's a great idea moving forward. Thank you. Agreed. Anyone else? Trustee Watts. No, and I agree, and thank you for bringing that up. And I think, um, and I had spoken with Dr. Maliko earlier, and if we could, um, just under the other, if you could bring up the updates regarding the STEM middle school um, admission, because we, and I don't know if that would be appropriate now or later, but that was something that we wanted to just to bring up. President, do you want me to? Are you ready for that? Sure, I'm going to have Mr. Martin come up to speak to that. <coughs> And I know the executive directors of achievement worked on that with Dr. Patterson. Yeah, and I'll let I'll let Ms. Farage kind of leads the is the middle school, but we both can plug in here. So, thank you. What What do you? So well, can she I, she mentioned the criteria. So basically, how we're piloting a new right. way to get in enrollment. Yes. New, that I know it's been in board briefs. Right. We discussed a research design that we're going to be using for next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking 45 students. We typically take 60 students in sixth grade. For this year, we're taking 45 in place of the 60, and we're using 15 for a research design for next year. What we do is uh, we take students who are averaging a score of one on the report card, so we do not solely depend on NWEA. We know that some students uh, do not do well and benchmark assessment. So we're using a different criteria for those. So students scoring an average of one across math and reading, in addition to principal and teacher recommendations, will be eligible to apply for STEM. They will be notified by Dr. Patterson. This uh, decision came about from instructional cabinet that includes principals, cabinet members, and executive cabinet members. Uh, we've been working on that. We pulled a list of those students. We met with STEM staff, uh, STEM administration. And again, this is only temporarily for next year. And we have a lengthy discussion that's going on. We've been meeting on a monthly basis uh, to update the STEAM criteria, not only STEM, because STEM uh, is the short way of STEAM includes more, it includes the arts the technology, the math, the science. So we're including the vision for K-12. There is a committee for that, and the principal have been involved heavily in this discussion so that we make sure every student in Dearborn Public School has access to STEAM education, not only the STEM students. Mm -hmm. So just real quickly, the 45 students are the ones that um, qualified based on the NWEA score in math and reading that all the fifth graders have taken. The other 15 will be those students who have the average score of a one. Um, I think we identified, and that's across uh, three card markings. So there's 91 of those students. All those students that qualify will be informed. Those that have interest will be entered into the lottery and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, for, the one, for the 91 students who have the aggregate of ones, um, after their interest after they uh, initially express an interest, uh, then that will come into the teacher and principal recommendation. Um, so again, I will say uh, 60 students, part of that is there isn't space for more. So yeah. anyways, that's for a later conversation. Thank you very much. And again, I want to thank um, Trustee Petchikoff for her suggestion, because I think just this is an example of how it closes the loop. A citizen will bring a concern to us. We take it. And, uh, and it's always discussed and deliberated, but 
the answer or what we've come up with as a solution isn't always given back to the community. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And I just so the individual we reach out to, so the individual gets a, you know, yes. has, we've been doing that for several, for quite a while now. We're an executive yeah. director, but the public, the doesn't, public doesn't, doesn't know that the yes. individual is getting a response yes. or a communication. Trustee Watts. Just to clarify, is it an average of a 1 or 1 1.5 with math and reading? So if you average, so it's ones and twos, okay. but less than a 1.5. So what okay. would average to a one, if that makes sense? I just sense. want to make sure so if yep. parents are hearing it, they yeah, know that it's... A, a student thing. doesn't have to have all ones. They right. can have a blend of ones and twos as long as it averages to a one when you're rounding up. So 1.499 okay. and lower, I guess. And then with <laughs> the, the 45 students, is it solely their NWEA or is it also M-STEP? I know they're working on that. For that this was, year, it's um, MWA. It yeah, used to be AMSTEP, um, but because AMSTEP um, was optional, did, we did not take AMSTEP um, into consideration for the last two years. Okay. Uh, the mar the average of one is for the first three marking periods because the fourth one is not available by the time the red line comes. Yeah. And what is the score on the NWEA? Can you remind me what that was? I have it right here. One second. It's okay if you don't have it. I mean. <laughs> Uh, while we wait for that, can I ask another question? Yes, related? go ahead. Tristan. So I asked a related question, and, and Dr. Malik, I was just whispering to him about this question to make sure that I didn't miss it on board briefs, is last time I asked how many students were accepted, but unfortunately said, you know, I'm changing my mind, or I cannot provide transportation to STEM. Because that's, I know, STEM does not have transportation. My sister went to STEM, and my father gave her a ride or I did sometimes, actually maybe once or twice, but my father took care of that and he's in East Dearborn, drove her all the way to Michael Berry every single day. And obviously STEM parents know this. This is a commitment. However, what about the parents who, their student gets accepted, but we don't have obviously transportation and we're not required to, I, and I, I know that answer, we don't require transportation period anyway, except for special ed, but it's an added benefit as a Dearborn resident and a, a student of being de in Dearborn Public Schools. We have transportation, but we can do just so much. We are already strength, uh, stretched with our busing. And to provide now another route for, to pick up STEM students, that's even an added cost. For students who, this program again is special. We do understand that. That's why we discuss it with parents. So how many students, I think I asked specifically, how many students in the past two years were offered STEM, but they, were, they, they decided not to, and, or they cited transportation as an issue? We did ask that specific question of the administration. And they said they've been collecting this data about what happens, and my son was one of the students too, and we carpooled. What they yeah. do is they work on their end mm -hmm. to make sure that they work it out with parents who are neighbors yeah. to be able to carpool. But in the future, they will be more uh, precise on collecting how many students are declining because of transportation. They did not have that number specifically, but they do work on providing um, carpooling yeah. by arranging with families. With families, that yes. is, because it's, it is a murky situation. It's a it's, choice. Yes, yeah. So there was an entry, and I think it was me, Adam, you put it in. Yeah. They, they estimated four to five students Correct. maybe a right. year. Yep. A year who, who yeah. would say, I cannot. Tr but yeah. they don't have exact data because it was never right, kept right, right. in any database. Yep. I think we should capture that from now yep. on, but however, those four, four or five students, unfortunately, they're, and this is where I'm talking about equity, is... We're offering this to parents who are able to drive their kids to school back and forth. Right. And they can work on other ways when we, the school system can help them do that. But we have to think, I think, even deep, as we're providing, I know we're providing DCMSD students still. I used to ride that bus. Mm -hmm. okay. So for middle school, it is an added cost to the district. Now do we have to say, are we gonna add transportation for all STEM, but STEM, they come, I know for DCMSD, they go to first to their home high school and they get picked up over there. Yeah, or, or the other, they'll come to the home high school and then go. So it's AM, PM. Yeah, AM, PM, yeah. yeah. So I know if we want to look into STEM of providing transportation, that would be a similar idea. They go to the middle school near them and the, or nearby schools, 
that we can decide. That's something for the future, I think, that we can look into. It's, it's not always a matter of just cost, though. There's logistics involved. Do you have enough bus drivers? Do you have enough people to Essentially service those cost. routes? So yeah. there's a, it's a complicated issue. So, yeah. To answer the question for reading and math, for reading it's 222, and for math, 232 on NWEA. Do those change every year depending <coughs> on the range of the students' scores, or is it? Set. Typically, we don't change it, but because of the percentile rank this year, many students dropped in NWEA because of the learning loss. Uh -huh. We adjusted based on percentile ranks, which is a better or more accurate measure of student performance. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item, please. Approval of minutes. Approval of minutes of the following Dearborn Board of Education meeting, study, board study session, April 11th, 2022, board report 21-109. Recommended action, make any necessary corrections and move <coughs> approval of these minutes. So moved. Support. Second. Okay, I have a uh, motion moved by Trustee Thorpe and I believe the support was by Trustee D'Ambrosio. It was both, but. Okay. <laughs> Are there any corrections, any changes anyone noticed that need to be made? Seeing none, may I have a roll call, please? Trustee Berry? Yes. Trustee D'Ambrosio? Yes. Trustee Mosep? Yes. Trustee Petrikoff? Yes. Trustee Thorpe? Yes. Trustee Watts? Yes. President McDonald? Yes. Next item? Action items. Are there any... Are there any agenda items on this agenda which board members or their superintendent wish to discuss and vote on separately? If there are, we will exclude these from the motion below. Are we, are we doing citizen participation first or not? No. No? No, no citizen. But we're doing the action items. Yes. That's where we're at right now. Yeah, yeah action items. Sure. Yeah, but we're not taking citizen participation yeah, on action it's items? It's on there. It's, it's on the agenda, person. yes. Oh, okay. It's just further down. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm not, I don't have that in front of me this time, so sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Trustee Thorpe. I don't have the number in front of me. Do we have to pull the item for Wayne, Risa, the, the budget item? Oh. I think we do. Does it yeah, require a call? I, I think that requires a roll call vote. Which one? I'm sorry. But we do a roll call vote for all of them because that's your style. Yes. <laughs> but um, do we need to pull it separately or no? No. Okay. Don't know. I just wanted to mention that one. I, I would like to uh, pull number 30. Obviously, that's a uh, supplemental. Pull and it for a roll call? Yes. Uh, can, can we pull citizen participation first or? We're right in the middle of what well, we haven't made a motion, items. right? Yeah, the motion's been made. Uh, who made the motion? This is where oh. citizen participation has always been. Yeah. And you got the Nothing's you got changed. the agenda ahead of time. It's I did, I did. I'm just confused about the agenda. Well, anyway, I, I'd like to call for a closed session. I make a motion to close for a closed session. On what basis? We can't just call for a closed uh, session. for personnel reasons and I need to, I'm highly advise that we need to meet in a closed session and I hope that we get a support for a closed session. When? Right now. To discuss personnel matters. So, so there is a legal, if we're discussing a current employee, we have to give the employee the opportunity to make a decision if they want to be present or not. I have this confirmed from our attorney. Yeah. So we would have to adjourn it and have a closed session at another time until we can speak to whomever the person is that um, if this is a personnel model discussion, um, whomever is being discussed um, has that right to, to make a decision present. to either be there or not be present. I, for can I make counsel. myself clear? Um, sure. I, on number 30, we're discussing personnel and current staff members who are going to be recommended here to hold a position in our district. I would like to discuss this personnel matter in closed session for the benefit of this individual. I would like a second if nobody's going to support my motion. I mean, we're, we're still, I'm just making a motion. If this motion is you're saying is, is illegal. It's a point of order. It's not illegal. It's just that the, so if there's a closed session, it's the person that gets to decide. I can't decide. You can't decide. It's the person that has to make a decision for open or closed. And then they have to 
decide okay. as to whether they want to sure. be present for the closed so, uh, session. I, I know when we were taught at MASB, we have one employee, which is you, Dr. Maliko. Yeah. So I'd like to call a closed session to discuss my superintendent's performance. I have been here for excuse, excuse me, excuse me. You do not have the floor? Me, I have yeah, you do not have. Hours, so I can't speak. Not yet. I'm so sorry. But we do have a meeting in order. So yes, we do well. not have the floor yet. We have a call for citizens' participation. So the other thing I would just say is we do and, have... And I, I know per law... I, I, and I it's my decision. This, it is your decision for us to... Dr. Maliko, I would like you to call upon us to call for a closed session to discuss your performance. So my question would just be that we have my, my evaluation meeting coming up. No, this is an urgent matter that is regarding... You know, just to play it safe, I'll go ahead and support the motion, just to play it safe. Okay, I will... I'll Remember, it's my decision. Yeah, it is your decision. Would you like it to be an open meeting, or would you like it to be a closed session meeting? It'll be a closed. Okay, so the motion is made that I, I'm making a motion. It's been supported by another trustee. I, then now it's open well, for and, discussion. And technically, I mean, you can vote on it, but and he doesn't it's want it. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't so want it. So technically, you have no choice over the matter. Right, right. We cannot discuss decision. this because so he's asking closed for a closed session, session, but we have to do a roll call, right? You technically, if, if, the, if the, you said the one employee that we have, just to be clear, yes, is asking for a closed session. At this point, then we need to just go yeah. into a closed session. Yeah, we need to make a it's time out. Time out. Time out. I think we still need protocol to do a roll call. Protocol here. Is the one employee that we have is asking for us to go into closed session, then we automatically go into closed session. We don't have an option. We don't even make the roll call. I, I made the motion and you supported it. The, this is new ground for. Hold on, hold on. The motion is mute now. Is it? Yeah. The employee is asking okay. for a closed okay, session. Go. We go into closed session. And I'm doing this to be cooperative because I have no be idea safe. what this yeah, is just about. To be I have safe. no idea what this is about. Okay. I want to make that clear. It might, be, it might be just a couple of minutes. I know. That's yeah. what I want to know. I want to kind of have a time well, frame on what, yeah, so on we'll what are your thoughts. In, Do you think your thoughts can be conveyed in a short period five of time? Five minutes. I just need five minutes with my colleagues. Okay. Pardon me? I think it, it yeah. will take, with logistics, it will take 10, 15 minutes. And I would like to apologize. 7.35. Is that what time it is now? Yeah. We'll be back here by 7.45. More seven, I, I would not like to set a time because okay. we may need to print some things. I would say give us a safe 15 minutes. We'll be back. Okay. I'm taking my computer with me. Thank you.